Hey guys, welcome to what is going to be a really great episode. This one is part of the series A Minute with Fred. We go up and see luthier extraordinaire Fred Wallachy up in his shop in Malibu. And getting a minute with Fred, you learn a lot. And today is going to be a really great experience that you could not pay for. So. Let's start off, I want to give a couple of acknowledgements. Hey, Rob at Guitar 48, you know what, you're something else. Rob says to me about a week and a half ago now, I got something up here that you're going to want to see, and once you see it, you're going to have to have it. And sure enough, it was this labeled 1932 Regal Resonator. Now, as I always do, I took a load of guitars up there because there's a lot of guitars coming in and out of here. And, and let me explain something to you. I did a an episode about how guitar shops work, and I'll give you a link up there. We're going to burn up a lot of cards, but here cards. But here's the deal: if you buy a guitar and you want to go sell the guitar to get something better. Unless you're a guitar shop, you're probably going to sit on it for a while because the used guitar market right now, unless you're dealing with something like this, and even with something like this, there's not a lot of people that are racing out to buy these. So, look at it this way. A guitar shop is in business to make money. And you will get guitar shops that will basically give you, if you're lucky, 75% of what they can sell your guitar for that you're trading in if it's sellable today, if they got to put any more money into it or fix it or time. But look at it this way. If I buy a guitar for $100 and I take it back in, in six months because I want a $200 guitar, and the guy in the shop says, I'll give you a $70 trade in on your $100 guitar, that's a pretty good deal and that's fair. Remember, keep guitar shops in business because without people like Rob at Guitar 48 and Fred Wallachy, you're dealing with a computer screen and they can't tell you the kind of things that you're going to hear from Rob or especially what you're going to hear from Fred. Now, this guitar has sent me down a path. There's going to be a playlist, another card or card iCard up there, hover your mouse when you see it popping up. This will be in a playlist called 1932 Regal Resonator. So you're going to see uh, what I traded for it, all that, and now we're going to get the minute with Fred. So um, while I was filming these episodes about this guitar, I got sent down a wild uh, rabbit hole. And in that process, I discovered this book called Palm Tree Senoritas and Rocket Ships. Mark Macon did this book. This is about resonators. This is about national resonators. This is the most incredible, incredible book. It is so full of pictures. Uh, there's everything in here, catalog ads, um, pictures of real guitars. This is a very thick book. I think it took about 10 years to make. I'm going to give you a link on how to order it below. You really, if you want a coffee table book, you really want this book. Now it has just about everything in it. And the funny part is when I went to try to find this Regal guitar, which has basically a national Dopier Brothers cone in it, I found it in an ad here, bear with me, I don't want to drop this book, it's right there, and check it out, it's on page 109, anybody that knows me knows <laughs> that there is a number plaque on my key ring that's from the oil filled rig up truck I ran for years at Bill Jackson Rig Company, that's right, number 109 small world, odd world, the planets are lining up. Anyway, so 
let's approach this guitar as if you bought it it's old you know the history of it if you don't you're going to want again um click up there there's an episode easy come easy go 1932 regal resonator and we made some visits some historical uh site visits that have everything to do with this but here's what we're going to fred with fred we got this guitar it is 92 years old it's in pretty good shape it's been played it's rough there's some things with it like this spot right here it used to be up here because somebody was strumming it and they just turned it um, there's some scuffs and some things like that but there's nothing real major wrong with this so here's here's the real question if I get a guitar like this and I start changing things on it, we know we don't want to do that. The value does this, okay? If you're if you're somebody that's going to play it every day, great, and you're going to make a living with it, and this is what you want to do, great. But if you're somebody that's collecting this or you, you put it in those in that area where your special guitars are, how much can you do to one of these guitars? under the title of cleaning it up before you start getting in trouble so we are going to put this in the case fred doesn't know what's coming we're going to film some other stuff while we're up there but you're going to see fred open the case and take a look at this and he's going to do some stuff with it and you're going to learn what is the limit on what you can do without going too far. Let's go see Fred. Oh, by the way, this checking, no doubt it was made in the winter in a cold shop. Because this is a different kind of weather checking. This, this is real typical of something that was lacquered in a cold, cold shop. You want to see what would happen if we... Well, okay, let's have some fun. Right there is where I've been working, right? So, so the sandpaper I'm using is four hundred, and it's a used four hundred, so. It's feeling like it's less than a new piece of 600. It's funny, you know, sandpaper is like golf clubs. You know, you use the right golf club for the job. You don't want to waste time with a golf club that would be short of what you, you want, you know. In other words, if it's got to go 100 yards, you use a club that goes 100 yards, you know necessarily use a nine iron and I hope you've got the technique to then make it go hundred yards. Okay, so I'm just leaning a little towards the fingerboard to go after this part here and then I'll just start polishing it. And it's kind of funny, I, I don't do this kind of work, you know, unless I can stab the sun to help. We see the low spots and the high spots. I don't know if you can see this, Ken, but there's a low spot right there. Do you see it? Do you, can you see the light in there? Come on in and look from this side. See the grain? Right, okay, so I'm just going to go after that. 
Now, I always use a block. On rare occasions, I will use my finger. Shoes. You notice it was 20 minutes into this project after setting eyes on this that he even strummed the string. Squeak, I know we're pretty good. See what we got. except the way I was getting it into the uh, bottles was gradually, but I'll back up. Uh, I actually went, I, I had a coffee, I got the Goodwill, got one of these big coffee urns like they have it outside the church, you know. And I got an electric egg beater. mounted at the top of the urn with the top off because the stuff likes this separate like salad dressing. So I've got the egg beater going and I've got a hose going into each bottle right now. I was getting the bottles from the drugstore. And I was something all I could make through the music store. And I thought, oh man, I gotta I gotta get serious about this. Fred, tell me about the cone. What do you do with the cone? Polish it or no? I'm gonna try the, uh, uh, this stuff, which is, uh, you know, under the adding of lighter fluid, but it's known as naphtha.
Yeah. Really, really, like, you know, somewhere down the line, you could even take the resonator off because this is this is totally separate. It has nothing to do with the cone. I'm going to use white diamond. for a second kind of deal, but I really like mothers the best. I need to get this lot of stuff away from it first. I might need light sandpaper on this because it's where, uh, you know, it's, let's see, let's see, let's see. Before I use the mothers, here's where I might use fingers. Gotta be kind of careful. We're getting it. See, now that confuses me. So, something like a fingernail. So maybe they didn't, maybe that finish doesn't come from the factory. It comes from somebody that applied it themselves somewhere down the line. Like you said, in a cold. Well, no, I'll bet you. It's kind of interesting if you look here at the binding. No, I think this is original finish. I think that, uh, you know, like for instance, there's a big buildup, uh, but there under the strings where so nobody could clean it. Let me show you what you're doing here so far. What grid is that sandpaper? Um, this is a used piece of 400. Let me get a, a new piece of 600 and then you tell me.
even better. This is 1500. Run your thumb over now. It's definitely lighter than the 15. Every time. <laughs> Fred, let's say I was at the Antiques Road Show in 2051 and I said, what, what about this piece of 1500 grit luthier sandpaper? And they said, well, it's worth about $3, but had it been used by Fred Wallachie, it would be worth the size. <laughs> So we're not really working on guitars here. What we're really doing is setting up a false economy of sandpaper for the Antiques Road Show. And what was that? 2050. 50. 51. 51, that's right. That's right, he died last year. I heard Wallach, he died last year. Yeah, people, what you are seeing is a holographic something or other here. The guitar is real. Gary went out with a smile, something about yeah, putting his faith in Jesus, you know? <laughs> he only made it to 95. Yeah, he only made it to 95. That paper. Now that I know it, on different parts of the resonator, but I've known the sandpaper, you know, from doing the, the edges. So this quadrant up here is the one we were working on. And, you know, obviously, you know, if I had the resonator off, I mean, the, the uh, you know, the cover, um, I could get to where the screws are and so on and so forth. But, you know, it's also need to keep it folky, you know. But that's pretty cool. 
that came out, you know, it's coming out nice. Kenny's going to do all the rest. And, and we could really get to even more of this finish if we wanted to. Um, you know, I didn't want to proceed with, I wanted to proceed with caution, so I stopped right there, but we could have gone on more. Anyway, so it is. The first thing I want to say is thank you, Fred. Thank you, Rob, for getting this guitar to me. Um, by the way, go visit Rob if you're in Southern California. That um, Silvertone Kentucky Blue is there. I put some good guitars in that shop. And if you're interested in that stuff, it's the stuff that was too good to junk pile. It's the arch tops and stuff that I never did anything with and Rob will run through them. There's probably a guitar with your name out there. So go see Rob, Guitar 48 Ventura. Mark Macon, your book is utterly incredible to say the least. Um, there is so much in here about not just pictures, but history. You can look and see. You know, I was looking for the factory they had in Long Beach on Gaylord Avenue, and there's a whole section in here about this when they were making uh, their guitars there. Again, the dope eras. But Fred, Fred has so much knowledge in here, the number of people he knows that he's interacted with. The fact that he actually had been to the Dopiero factory. Oh, that's in another episode. You don't even know about this part yet. But he used to buy guitars from Rudy Dopiero and go to the factory in Long Beach when they were there to hang on the wall at Westwood Music. So, Fred, you are the best. Um, and Fred does what he always does to me. He showed me some wonderful secrets. Here is Fred's work. This area is not Fred's work. This is Fred's work. The rest of it is not. And as he told you in the video, the rest of it is my work. So, um, dealing with these guitars and collecting them is an awesome thing because you run into great stories, wonderful histories, and great people like Fred. So, hey, if you can't give me a like for this one, uh, give Fred a like and subscribe if you haven't. And I am off to the next adventure. I'm looking around me. I got some good ones here. See you soon.